Hello everybody and welcome back to The Second Shelf. Despite corona, horrible isolation, social distancing, people getting ill, Idris Elba has the corona. I mean, Tom's, Tom Hanks, I could let slide. But Idris fuck, Elba? But anyway, despite all that, there are still other things happening. And one of them are birthdays. And today, on the 18th of March, 2020, Doris from all the books, our own Doris, celebrates her 50th birthday. Yes, you heard me right, her 50th. And if you are one of those very, 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 very few people who might not know Doris, I leave a link to her channel down below and please check her out. She is such a lovely person. She is intelligent and humorous and she has cats and she goes outside and she makes vlogs and she reads fabulous books. So if you have never checked out her channel, please do so. But anyway, we wanted to celebrate her 50th birthday. So Sean and I came up with the idea to make a tag just for her, the Read Doris tag. And there is also there, it's a short and sweet tag. Nothing too fancy because that's not how Doris is. She likes her PJs and she likes to relax. So it's just five prompts, one for each letter of her name. And there is a bonus challenge. You can make a TBR on the basis of these prompts. And then, as we say, down the stairs, down, down stairs, down there, read your heart out to celebrate Doris's birthday. Uh, what I will do is I will give for, not for all, but for some of the prompts, I will talk about two books, one of which is a book that I've read that fits the prompt, and one of uh, them, the second one, is a book that I want to read. So I will participate in this bonus challenge and try to read um, for Doris. Okay, let's get into the prompts. And the first prompt is, I was looking up because there are animals, because it's springtime, as you probably can see from the sunshine, and there are these animals flying around making weird noises. I'm not an outdoorsy person, as you might have gathered. Anyway, prompt number one is D is for Doris. Da. And the prompt says, a book by or about a Doris. And my first pick, because for this prompt, I will have two books indeed. The first book is one that I've already read, a memoir. And I know that Doris really loves memoirs. And this memoir is by Jenny Diskey. Yes, there's no Doris in there, but it is about a Doris. The book is called Ingratitude, and it is Jenny Diskey's memoir, published in 2016, about her relationship with Doris Lessing. Uh, Jenny Diskey was a writer, and when she was a teenager, 14, 15, she was taken in, saved, quote-unquote, by Doris Lessing. Uh, the relationship was temptuous, um, complicated, um, and at the end of her life, because sadly, when Jenny Disk wrote this memoir, in gratitude, she was, uh, has been diagnosed uh, with inoperable cancer, and she knew she didn't have uh, much longer to live, but she wanted uh, to tackle one subject, and that was her relationship, 50-year relationship with Doris Lessing. So this is the first book for D is for Doris. The second book is a book that I want to read. And that book, the book I want to read, is by an Austrian author, Vicky Baum, Die Karriere der Doris Hart, The Career of Doris Hart. Uh, the book was first published in 1936, and unfortunately, there is, as far as I could see, there is no English translation. I'm reading the book uh, in German for the year-long challenge to read more books originally written in the German language that Mel from Mel's Bookland Adventure and I are organizing, Read German Books 2020. I will leave a link to the Goodreads group down below if you're interested and haven't heard yet of this challenge. But unfortunately for all of you who can't read uh, in German, yeah, sorry about that, but it is about a Doris. 
Doris Hyde. The book is set in New York in 1927 in the Roaring Twenties and Doris uh, is an uh, immigrant from uh, Europe and she tries to get by in uh, New York by you know, working as a waitress, uh, posing uh, naked for uh, painters. Uh, but her ambition is she wants to become a famous opera singer. So the book is about the this young woman's uh, life. Um, her It's not a, a coming of age because she is already um, a grown woman, but it is about her trying to make and find a life uh, in New York City in the Roaring Twenties. I'm really looking forward to reading this book for you, Doris, and I would have asked you to read it with me, but like I said, no English translation, so I will have to read it all by myself. The second prompt, obviously, O. O is for outside of your comfort zone. Read a book or a book you read that is outside of your comfort zone. Now, I have to say, um, I, I, it's not that I have a comfort zone in terms of genres. There are certain genres that I enjoy more than others and certain genres that I don't read that often, uh, like romance. I mean, I had a phase when I was uh, all into Regency romance, but it's not, um, yeah, that I really have a genre that would be outside my comfort zone. But there are some books that... Um, tackle subjects or write about stuff that is really uh, outside of my comfort zone in other ways. And the book I picked for this is a book that I've recently read and that uh, the contents of this book was definitely outside of my comfort zone. And that book is Tender is the Flesh by Argentinian writer Agustina Basterica, translated from the Spanish by Sarah Moses. The book was uh, in the English translation was just published a couple of weeks ago. Um, and I think a year before that or two years before that uh, in the original Spanish. It's a dystopian book. Um, very, uh, because I want to talk about the book uh, at, at more length in, in another video, but just to give you an idea, the book is, uh, the premise of the book is that um, all the non-human meat is poisonous, animal died because of a virus, and people still want to eat meat, so they uh, have humans in meat factories. Um, they, they are, you know, made to live just to be killed and to be eaten. And this was so, um, I, I, I was afraid that the book would be gross. It's not gross, but it's so in your face about meat um, because you just have to make the switch from what they tell us about the humans being, uh, human beings who are slaughtered and then the meat is cut up and then you eat the, uh, you know, the hand or whatever, or the tender flesh of the, um, uh, of the backside or something. And you just have to make a little switch into, I don't know, beef or pork or whatever, that it, it's really, it's really outside of, at least it was outside of my comfort zone, for sure. Um, because I don't have a second book for this challenge, I at least wanted to do, not really a vlog, but I wanted to film a short clip outside. Can you imagine? Me, outside. It's quiet now, um, because it's about 6 15 in the in the evening so it's quiet out normally you have children playing in the in the backyard over here downstairs down in the backyard but I thought Doris just for you I mean I've never made a vlog in my life and I probably won't but at least I wanted to insert a certain uh, one short clip definitely outside of my comfort zone because it's outside just for you happy birthday Doris Thank God, we're back inside. I made it safely back inside my room in splendid social distancing isolation surrounded by books. 
What you do for friends, it's unbelievable. Anyway, on to the next prompt, and that is R. R is for recommended, a book, topic, or theme that Doris featured on her channel um, and that you liked, or a book that you've read because of her, uh, or a topic that you explored because of her. Um, I mean, Sean worded it really beautifully, so you can read it down in the show notes. Um, and for this prompt, I, again, I have uh, two books. And the first one is the Gilead seri series by Marilyn Robinson, um, uh, published in, in uh, the 19... No, in 2004 or something um, onwards, the first book is Gilead, and then you have Home, and then you have Lila, and there will be a, a fourth book coming out, I think, in September, Jack. Uh, and I've never read Marilyn uh, Robinson before I met quote unquote, uh, we never met personally yet, unfortunately, but before I knew Doris, I've never read Marilyn Robinson. And we read all three books as buddy reads, and that was fantastic. First of all, the buddy reads were really great, and I enjoyed Gilead, and we just finished Lila, um, uh, this week, and I, I loved it. It's, uh, you know, about um, uh, set in, in the US in the 1950s, and the main character is uh, 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 a reverend, John Ames, and his wife, Lila, and Ames's best friend, John Bowden, and it's about uh, religion. Um, it's about how you... Um, uh, cope with life uh, in, in at that time. Uh, I mean, check it out on Goodreads. It, it's way too much to just explain it here in a, in a short clip, but Marilyn Robinson was certainly an author that I discovered thanks to Doris. And the second book um, is a book that I haven't read, and it's also a, a, a different topic, because one of the things that Doris really likes to read about is adventure fiction. Uh, and, I'm sorry, adventure nonfiction. <laughs> ah, I'm so excited about this birthday, Doris, that I, yeah, I move too much, so, but anyway, adventure nonfiction. That was not anything that I was really into. Um, but I found a couple of themes and books, you know, that I'm all into epidemics at the moment. And I found a book that fits this category of adventure nonfiction. And I hope maybe, Doris, you want to read it with me at some point. And that book is The Cruelest Miles uh, by Gay and Laney Salisbury, first published in 2003. And it is about a real... Um, event in the mid-1920s there in a very remote uh, village in Alaska was a, uh, an outbreak of a, dift a diphtheria uh, epidemic and they didn't have any medicine and they were cut off from because of the winter time so they had to uh, use uh, dog sleighs in order to get to the uh, bigger city and bring um, uh, the vaccine back to the village. So it is about a dog, uh, about a race in, in a certain sense. Uh, it's about epidemics. I know that Doris loves um, uh, to read about epidemics and it sounded really engaging. So The Cruelest Miles is on my TBR as a book to read for Doris to prompt number four, the letter I. And I is, and this time I'm going to read it, I is for indeed. She's crazy about cats and bees and other animals. So a book about cats or bees or any other animal or notably featuring them in the story and or on the cover. I mean, Sean, you are just too difficult for me. I'm such a simple-minded person. But anyway, I have two books again for this one. And the first one is a sort of a sci-fi dystopian book that I read and really enjoyed, Laleen Paul, The Bees. Um, and it's set in a beehive and it follows uh, one bee in particular, a worker bee, Flora, certain number, um, they're all called Flora and then they have numbers. Uh, but she is different from other worker bees and then she has to fight um, against convention and they are also outside animals. And I thought this book was fantastic. The way it shows 
uh, you know, it's a sort of a 1984 um, themed book, but then set in a beehive about bees. I thought it was fabulous. And the second book uh, for this prompt is for Indeed, uh, <laughs> um, is a book from my physical TBR that I bought last year, and that is Mona Awad's book of novel, Bunny. Um, it has an animal on the cover, so that's why I chose it. And because it's on my TBR, there are no animals, as far as I know uh, from the blurbs in the book, but one on the cover is enough. Um, it's a campus novel uh, set in... A, a Mona Awad is a, a Canadian author, by the way, and I've never read her, even though Bunny is not her debut novel. Um, and the book is set um, in... Um, a prestigious school, an MFA program, and the main protagonist, Samantha, is a bit of an outsider. And there's this, you know, rich group of people, and especially two girls, and they call each other Bunny. Uh, I heard mixed things about this book. Um, I have to admit that. I bought it on a whim um, last year. Um, but I thought this is a good opportunity to finally read it because it has an animal on the cover, so it fits the prompt uh, for E indeed, uh, Doris Loves Animals. And the last prompt is S, and S is for Skyrocket. If you followed uh, Doris, you know that she has this huge pile of books stacked in her uh, win on her windowsill, and she calls it the Tower of Doom. Those are books that she has bought, couple of years back and never read and she wants to work through them and she is doing a good job she's working through them and Sean and I thought we can't have the Tower of Doom diminish to zero we want to have it skyrocket up there in the air so <laughs> the last S is for skyrocket is a book you think Doris might like and that you want her to read let's get the Tower of Doom up into the stratosphere that's how we of, uh, that's how we said it in the prompts. I mean, people, I had very little sleep. I'm sorry, Doris, about that. But anyway, I have a book for you, Doris, and I'm sure you will like it. It's a non-fiction book, Laura Spinney, Pale Rider. And I think you already, it's already on your radar because it is about the 1918-1919 flu. I read it just last month and it is fabulous. Um, it's uh, really giving a, a picture of the global impact that this flu had, um, uh, looking at um, individuals, but also uh, uh, looking at groups and how it spread. And given the fact, uh, I know that Doris has already read uh, quite some books about the flu, this is a perfect addition uh, to the flu collection. So for the Tower of Doom up into the stratosphere, I recommend Laura Spinney, Pale Rider. <sighs> so I did all the prompts and I went outside. So the only thing I have to do now is I have to tag people. And forgive me if again I will look at my uh, computer screen because as you know, I ca can't memorize like uh, a group of six people. So here we go. I tag a bunch of lovely people. I tag Kate Howe, uh, Najma from Najma Reads, Lukash from Totally Pretentious, Stephanie from That's What She Reads, Vipke from One Book, One Review, and of course Steve from Steve Donahue, because otherwise he will complain that he is never tagged because nobody likes him because he smells. And the bonus uh, challenge, I already talked about that because I mentioned uh, the three books that I want to read for this challenge. So again, let me end by happy birthday, Doris. And you must be so happy and glad that I didn't sing, but at least I went outside. I hope you have a fabulous birthday and I hope all of you enjoyed the tag and those of you whom I tagged will do it uh, and tag other lovely people so that we can spread the birthday love for Doris. Thank you, everybody, for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this tag, and I'll see you all soon in the next one.